Hi, this is Frank Taylor with Nature Your Door, and I'm here out on my back deck looking at this wasp right here. Isn't that amazing? How cool is that to see? So this is a very particular kind of wasp, and I wouldn't approach any wasp like this. Find out why I'm not afraid of this wasp, and find out what is that a stinger on the end of that thing? Stay tuned. Right here in your backyard, you never know what you're going to find. So I was out here on my deck this morning, and I saw this wasp right here walking along the railing of my deck. Look how beautiful this guy is. Now a lot of people, when they see this, get a little panicky because they recognize it as a wasp. But then they'd look and say, oh my gosh, that wasp, look how long its stinger is. That wasp must be really dangerous. Well, this wasp, in fact, is not dangerous. And while it looks like a stinger, that's actually an ovipositor. And what this wasp does is usually in woodlands. And I think it's here because it's found this old wood. And you see how it's tapping its antenna against the wood there? What it's looking for and essentially listening for is a grub of a beetle larva that's eating inside the wood. When it locates that grub, it uses that tail to penetrate the wood and lay an egg either in or on the organism that it's going to be preying upon. And so it parasitizes the larva of beetle that feed inside wood, that feed on decaying wood. Uh, I think longhorn beetles are one of their uh, specialties that they look for to specifically parasitize. This looks very similar to a wasp in another video I've done called the giant ichneumons. And I don't know if I pronounced that right, so I'll spell it on here. Um, this one is actually smaller than those wasps. They all have a similar lifestyle. And um, this one is in a genus called Zeroides. And it's very striking in appearance, the black wasp with the, with the very distinct white markings on it. So it shows up a lot on um, uh, nature sites and stuff, but there's really not a lot written about it, not a lot of research on it. But note the distinctive white markings on the antenna and on the legs. Note the ovipositor, which is, um, and all stingers, by the way, are modifications of ovipositors. And the ovipositor here is as long as the length of this particular wasp species is. So I just want to reiterate again, that thing that looks like a stinger can't sting a person, but it can bore into wood. And how it does it, there seems to be some conflicting information. Scientists are still researching it. Some are finding that the tip of that thing is really hard. I've read some things about a reciprocating action between parts of the filament, so it's almost drilling. And then I've also read that it releases enzymes that soften the wood that allow it to push in. Sometimes it may take up to 45 minutes for it to push that um, ovipositor all the way in and lay that egg that'll hatch and parasitize the larva of a beetle that is feeding inside the wood. Such an amazing uh, adaptation, really amazing. And you, they use that tapping of their antennas. They're listening for the sound of that larva chewing inside the wood. And that's how they identify the location. What an amazing life cycle. So it's been really interesting filming this wasp right here and sharing a little bit about it with you. I am going to back off here, but remember, hey, if you like what I do on this channel, 
Please subscribe, give me a like, and leave me a comment. I really love hearing from my viewers. And remember, I cover all things nature, from frogs, toads, snakes, and turtles, the myriapoda, insects, trees, wildflowers, and fungi. I cover all the things you might encounter just outside your door. So thanks again for watching this episode of Nature at Your Door.